Let's go with me over to Philippians chapter 3, verse 4. It says, Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is the law blameless. So here's what Paul's saying about himself. Listen, this is who I was. I, I, I walked in the law. I was a teacher. I was a pedigree. I, I had on my wall in my office, I had all the plaques, everything with me. He said, but what things were gained to me, these I have count for loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, that I may, what, gain Christ. And why am I reading this to you? Because Paul had to undo his doctrine. Paul, had to, Paul was killing people thinking he was doing God's work. Paul was persecuting people thinking he was doing God's work. And then the, the grace of God came into his life and taught him he was wrong. And then he had to unlearn everything. He has to say, I was completely wrong. I had the zeal. I thought I was doing God's work. The things that were gained to me then, I count them as human waste, that I might what? I may gain Christ. In being found in him, having not my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through the faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is from God, Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. I, I mean, here, here's what Paul, I mean, almost, he's almost, if, if we could see, we could go back and see, he's telling them in a very elevated way, I had this completely wrong. I was wrong. And, and we need some people today to say they're wrong. We need people to understand that your doctrine may be wrong. That we need to understand to be one with Jesus means all in. It means that everything you are, everything you have, your time, your resources, your relationships, everything is his. And we're one with him. And he can lead us. He can guide us. We can follow him because he loves us. And, and Paul's just learning that here. Because he says, all of that's rubbish, but here's what I want. I want to gain Christ, and oh, that I may know him is like he lost himself. Oh, that I may know him in the power of his rest. I just want to know him. Do you remember when you first started dating, how you wanted to know the person? You just wanted to know what pleases them, what they're like. You know, and, and so that's what Paul was saying here. I just want to know him. I, Moses said, I want to know your ways, right? And so... When we, when we look at the scripture, you know, Paul says in verse 10, he says, Oh, that I may know him in the power of the resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I have obtained the resurrection of the dead. He said, Not that I have already attained already, or I'm already perfect, but I press on that I may hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold on me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are beyond, behind and reaching toward those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize, the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus, right? And so, you know, I, you know Paul here had to unlearn everything from his past. He was taught wrong. It was wrong. And he learned it was wrong. And so I can tell you in my life, as own personal testimony, I grew up in the Lord. You know, I, I came in in the very early 80s, maybe late 70s, and 79 or 80. And, you know, until the 90s, I had a bunch of this false doctrine in me. And, and I just regurgitated what they taught me. And I believed it. I took it as gospel. And then there was a day in the 90s, early 90s, where the Lord told me to get rid of all of my tapes and all of my other teaching materials, get rid of my books. So I packed them all up and gave them all away. He said, it's you, me, and the Bible. And I began to go through each of the doctrines. I began to go through the baptisms. I began to go through the name it, claim it gospel at the time and 
this abundant grace and live, you know, God loves you just the way you are. And God loves you where you're at, okay? But, but he wants you to grow. You know, it's like, do you want a three-year-old to stay three years old or, or two years old? Or do you want them to regress back to birth? So spiritually, God wants us to grow. And then God wants us responsible for what we know. He wants us responsible to walk in what we know. So we don't come in with this. You know, this, this message, this series, is really not for someone new other than show them what they need to aspire to. It's for us that are, you know, maybe uh, uh, 17 years old in the spirit, acting like we're 10. We need to get back to who we are. And we need to grow in who we are because who we are in Christ, when we reach that place of, I'll call it perfection, where you're controlling your tongue, you're, you're controlling your mind, you're controlling the things in your life because the word of God is in you, then you become dangerous. Then God answers prayer. Then you can shake the world. But this halftime stuff isn't going to do it. This living in both worlds isn't going to do it. We can't, we can't pos God can't possibly give us the power that is required to change the darkness in this world without us being all in and seeing our life through what his expectations are. Because that's really the goal of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we go through life and he, and he brings us along in this journey. I mean, even when you look at Jesus talking about the, you know, the, the, the new birth in John 3. You don't have to turn there. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son in the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds but be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they were done in God. Amen. And so, you know, I, I told you this earlier, but but God is separating us. We are to be separate from the world. Jesus separated those that desire to walk in light. That was the message. Walk in the light as he is in the light, right? Walking in the light means walking in the word of God. But he wants us to be separate, seen, and different. When we look like the world, we're not. We're not. When we're hypocritical in our walk, people don't take that conviction. I mean, you can tell somebody you're wrong. They look at you and say, well, you're wrong. You know, what does that do? <laughs> right? We need to be blameless. We need to get ourselves to that place, to that point. And, and then when we're at that point, we walk in love. And the aroma, the light, the fruit of the Spirit of God that's in us, because we're walking in that purity, will do more by them witnessing us than what we say. Does that make sense?